just survived a major snowstorm this past weekend here in Minnesota and uh, it's starting to shovel out and uh, I took the weekend off spend it with my husband <laughs> anyway this is the list that I showed on my last video there's been one thing added here at the very bottom and that's putting the final finish on the bill um, I have uh, done the final um, shading and coloring on the bill and it needs to have a uh, coat a clear coat of of uh, something I'm not sure what I'm going to use for sure this time I used to use Kurt's bill sealer and um, I still have some of that so I may be uh, going to that uh, and if I do I'll demonstrate that as well um, so today I'm going to pick up where I left off and I'm going to be applying the ivory black to the breast and uh, finishing up uh, the head feathers by adding some iridescence and some supporting color for that iridescence uh, that's the goal take a look at uh, the detail on the redhead now the bill uh, when I was painting this detail uh, my camera cut out on me and I did not realize it so I'm going to give you just an update on the bits of detail that I added in that lost video so um, you can see a subtle shading has been gone on with the um, where the white occurs just before the black in the bill the nostrils have had detail added the upper mandible in front of the eyes has also had uh, finer detail added to it those wrinkles on the edge um, sides of the upper mandible have been added and the colors have been blended and finished up underneath so now I'm going to be adding um, the ivory black that I need for the outer edge of each one of these um, breast feathers give it some depth and pop the color I'm gonna add a little bit more black this is a um, fast mat it dries faster than your basic oil paint and uh, I just wanted to um, add a little bit more before I start now the um, I'm back with my 5050 Grumbacher medium number one and the turpentine Grumbacher turpentine and I've got my real fine Raphael number one Kalinsky sable with a really nice point on it still and I'll be able to add more detail using this than I would with a with a uh, brush that's lost its point from use so as black as this looks as soon as I start adding this um, to the outer edge of each one of these feathers you'll see how different it truly is And by doing this, it gives a lighter uh, base of the feather. Adds depth. And I'm not using it real thick. More thin than thick and I um, always roll my brush as I pull it off of the 
palette for two reasons. It points the brush out, but it also gets rid of some excess paint that I don't really need uh, at this point. And I'll be coming back with uh, more red and black to split, add splits and finish out that transition. see how the paint bleeds up into the feather <clears throat> the right consistency that happens and it um, can be a problem if you don't want it to happen but it's really wonderful when you do so when I go along that outer edge of the feather the paint is following the burn lines right up into the base of the feather so I don't even really have to do um, feathering work. Again, it's one of the beauties about painting with oils is you've done all of that detail work before you actually started painting so you don't need to paint it in. It's subtle, perhaps, but it's these subtle differences that we add that <clears throat> really bring the um, realism to the piece. And if I feel like I've got too hard of a line, then I can come back with my blending brush and soften it. It's much easier um, to paint in the color you want at the base of your feather than it is, and then to add the darker or lighter outer edge than it is to do it in the other order. I'm trying to um, paint this outer edge and then come back and and add. Uh, you know, the detail of the base of the feather doesn't blend as well and uh, could be problematic.
Wood is hard on a Kalinsky sable brush, especially, you know, the really fine point of it. And uh, it's a sacrifice that must be made to achieve uh, the look you want. And with each stroke, a little bit of that point gets worn down and the uh, point of that brush is, becomes less and less. Um, it's not the end of the brush by any means. It's just going to be reassigned a new job. It's quite a bit of difference in color there now. It's going to be a little bit like standing on my head to get in, and you want to be sure and know where you're putting your brush so you're not painting it incorrectly. We're putting color in the right place now because the detail's already there. But you could ruin that detail by painting it incorrectly hastily and not minding where the feather stops and starts. And you see this side compared to this side. really adds dimension. Sometimes we have to contort ourselves just to get into a certain area, like under the bill here. It's not so easy to get into. And you run the risk of touching your brush where you don't want to. So you need to keep a paper towel and a clean brush available so that when that happens, and it will, you can quickly just take care of what you just did. Took very little just to clean that up, so um, don't look at it and say, oh look, I touched my brush to the bill where I'm all, I'm all finished painting and think you're going to come back later and have it be any, have it be easier. It will be more difficult to deal with. So better to deal with that right away. The gamble and fast mat is also will dry mat, which is um exactly what I want for this, these breast feathers. And then uh, I'll be adding 
some iridescence to the head next after I get this finished up and uh, that'll require some supporting color a little bit of fuzz And turn, turn the head so that you can see the texture on that feather to be adding it correctly, the, the black color correctly to the <coughs> to the uh, outer edge of the feathers. And then after you finish an area, take a quick look to see if you didn't miss anything. Very easy to miss. There's so much detail. You want to be sure that you don't inadvertently miss something. can see where I have added that and where it has yet to be added. Go this side. This side. It's only gone to here. Every year I end up buying uh, a zero, a one, and a two of the uh, Raphael um, rounds, the 8408s, like I'm using here. And then I just have a nice sharp one set aside, brand new and ready to go uh, for when I actually need it. That way I've been able to, uh, and I hand pick them at World. And, uh, you know, when you get the, it's like eyes, glass eyes. I feel it's important for me to hand pick the glass eyes I'm going to use. Then you can expect inspect different aspects like um, the color and the matching of the pupils and uh, the height of the dome on that eye. You want to make sure it's the same on both. And sometimes it takes six pair of glass eyes to get 
one good one, maybe you end up with, you know, four good ones in the end when you mix and match, but just because they are being sold together as a blister pack or on wire doesn't mean that uh, it's necessarily a, a matched pair. They don't have time to match the pairs, so um, they're pretty good about letting us match up pairs at the world, but rather than spend my time matching eyes at world, I'll end up buying, say, six or ten pair and then end up with um, matched pairs that were not necessarily together on the same wire or blister pack. And it may take coming back, you know, a second time and um, adding a little bit more black after you get this done the first time. It's easy enough to do. I'm not going to go too far up into the transition from the dark feathers to the head feathers. Starting to look pretty darn good. It's the way I want it to look. 